I have another flashlight review for you. Today I have the Wizard C2 Pro from the company Armitech. If you're interested in hearing more about this light, keep watching. All right, as always, I just want to declare that this flashlight was sent to me for testing and review, and I did not pay for it. However, I'm receiving no compensation for the making of this video or from the sale of any of these lights. All right, as always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I will go over the physical and performance specifications for this light. I'll go over its modes of operation, and then, of course, we'll get outside and do some testing. Just before we go into the physical and performance specifications for the Armitech Wizard C2 Pro, I thought I'd share with you what it came with. So this is the box that the flashlight came in. And of course, there is a, an instruction manual and warranty information manual with it. The USB to magnetic base charging cable. We can talk more about that in a few moments time. A head strap that you can mount the flashlight on to use as a headlamp, of course, and I have a few comments on that as well. A bicycle mount that you can attach this to the handlebar of your bicycle, mount the flashlight in and use it as a bike light. A pair of spare O-rings. And right on the flashlight, you can see a rather heavy duty pocket clip. And I'll, I'll tell you, it's this is a stiff, a uh, heavy duty pocket clip to say the least. It was a little challenging to get on, but once I got it on, it's even more challenging to get off. And of course the flashlight does come equipped with a 3500 milliamp 18650 battery. Quickly, let's just talk about a few of the key features for this light. So Army Tech does market this as a multi-use light. And they say this is an ideal EDC light, and it is a good EDC light. I've carried it quite a while for that purpose. It is a headlamp, and it is a bike light. They also sell an option that will allow you to mount this to presumably a construction helmet. It does have a magnetic base and will hold on to items quite well. And, of course, the magnetic charging cap goes on the base as well. I think quite unique in the, this industry is that this flashlight has a 10-year no-hassle warranty. Now, the other unique thing is that it's a Canadian company, Army Tech is, a Canadian company, but they outsource a lot of the development for the components to different countries around the world, and they build and run their own factory in China. Going over the physical specifications for the Wizard C2 Pro, it comes in at 4 ounces even, or 115 grams. That's with the battery installed. It has an overall length of 4.4 inches, which is 112 millimeters. It has a diameter at its widest of 1.3 inches, or 33 millimeters. It, the company states that it has a 131 meter beam cast and they also state that it has a central hotspot of about 70 degrees and a flood of 120 degrees spread. They do state, and this is where things really start to get in, interesting, is that the flashlight has an IP68 rating. And I, and I thought this next part was a mistake, but I, I confirmed it by going through the information and looking on the website. It has a 10 meter underwater submersion guarantee for two hours, not two meters or one meter, 10 meters. It also has an impact resistance to dropping of 10 meters. I don't know of another flashlight on the market that claims to have that much uh, of a rating for the uh, waterproofness as well as the drop. All right, I will go through the performance specifications for the Wizard C2 Pro, but I want to preface this by saying that the way they've designed this light, they have two categories or two modes under which it can be operated, the general or standard mode and an advanced mode. And the lumen settings that I'm about to give you are broken down into one category or the other. And you'll note that there are 12 different lumen settings for this light. So I'll start at the 
the top and list my way down through them, but I will, of course, put all this information in the video description below. So starting at the top, at its brightest, it's known as Turbo 3, and that starts off at 2,500 lumens, which only lasts for 30 seconds before dropping down to 650 lumens for an additional 2 hours, 40 minutes. It has Turbo 2, 1,750 lumens lasting for 2 minutes, and then dropping down to 650 lumens for 2 hours, 45 minutes. It has Turbo 1, 870 lumens, before dropping down to 650 lumens, and the first lasts at 9 minutes, and then follows up with 2 hours and 50 minutes. It has Level Main 3, 370 lumens, 5 hours and 15 minutes. Main 2, 160 lumens, 12 hours, 15 minutes. Main 1, 45 lumens, 43 hours. It has Firefly 3, 6 lumens, 12 days. Firefly 2, 1.5 lumens, 40 days. Firefly 1, 0.15 lumens, 200 days. It also has three strobes. Strobe 3, which is, runs at 10 hertz, is 2,500 lumens, and then dropping down to 650 lumens after 100 seconds. Strobe 2, 1 hertz, 2,500 lumens, dropping down to 650 lumens. Strobe 1, 100, 1 hertz as well, 160 lumens, and lasting for 55 hours. I cannot think of another flashlight that has that many different settings on it. Uh, yeah, a few more comments about that as we get into the operation of this light. All right, I will go over the operation of the Wizard C2 Pro, uh, but I'll tell you now, it's going to be more than a little bit confusing. So let me explain. So with all those different lumen settings under all those different categories, Army Tech decided to break it down into two large categories. They referred to them as general type and advanced type. And under the advanced type, there are actually even more breakdowns in terms of sections. So let's just go back to the general type for a moment, and I'll tell you what you have access to in terms of uh, lumen settings. So you do have Firefly 1 and Firefly 2. You have the three main modes, and you have Turbo 2, so you can access those. When you get into the advanced modes, you have access to everything for all three of the Firefly, three of the main, the three turbos, and the strobes. So uh, I'm not sure quite what to say here. The only thing really missing from the general type, in my opinion, is some form of strobe. But to be honest, I haven't found that too big of a handicap at all. I think most people will do what I do, and that is leave it in the general mode unless they have some specific reason they want to get access to all of the modes. But for me, it's there's just too many modes to go through on this light. So I'll give you the basic operation of the flashlight in the general mode, but I'm not going to go to the advanced mode. I'll put all the instructions in the video description and as well as all the modes and everything else, but it, it's just too much to, to try to do in this video successfully anyway. All right, so Simple on off button on the top or side of the flashlight right here, easy to identify bright yellow. And we'll talk more about this light in a moment because it's also a battery state indicator and a beacon, if you will, to find it in the dark, something that can be turned off and on as well. So when I press and hold down on the button, and I'll do that in one moment, when I press and hold down on the button, it'll start off cycling through the two fireflies, then it will cycle through the three main modes, and then it will continue to cycle back and forth through the main modes. If you release the button at any time and turn it back on, it has a memory for the last setting. Then when you want to get to turbo, while the flashlight is turned on, you can double click and you'll access the turbo mode. And if you turn it off and turn it back on, 
turbo becomes the last setting. So it goes right back to turbo again. So that's a little bit different than just about every flashlight that I've operated before where turbo is outside of the regular cycle. So let me demonstrate. I'll try not to blind you with the light, but it'll start, it'll just work its way up very quickly through Firefly, main modes, and then I access turbo manually. So the lowest lighting, you can see it's starting to get brighter. And then it will start just cycling through the top three main modes. All right, with the light, now let me just take it down to say that is the lowest of the main modes. Now I'll double click and you can see just how bright it gets. Let me just turn that off, turn it back on and it's right back at turbo again. Kind of an interesting and different way of operating the light. Now I will explain how you switch from general type to advanced type, but again, I, I'm not sure that I, I uh, think it's worth trying to demonstrate in this in the video. So the instructions say to loosen the battery cap off, one quarter turn, press and hold the on off switch, tighten the battery cap up, and now when I turn the light on, I should be in advanced mode. And see just how many cycles, now see that it's just cycling through the fireflies. And that's what I meant. The, when you get into the advanced mode, what happens is it you have to switch from firefly to main to turbo to strobe. And there's a sequence and way of doing things. I don't get it, quite honestly. I just don't get it. All right, let me turn the light off. I'm, I'm going to be switching back to general mode. Maybe I'm too simple a guy to appreciate the complexity of this, but yeah. Now, I'm going to hopefully I probably should have turned off one of the lights. If we watch, we should see the flashing light occur inside of the switch. It'll be flashing green to indicate that the battery status is still good. Once again, I'll put how, oh, I'll slip out of flame, frame there, uh, how the battery status operates in terms of its color changing modes uh, and how you can turn that on and off. All right, you know, there is so much to this flashlight in terms of the levels. I think this is where it will stop with the operation of the flashlight now. All right, having gone over the physical and performance specifications as well as the modes of operation for the Wizard C2 Pro, there's only one thing left to do, and of course that's get outside and do some testing. Doing some nighttime testing for the Army Tech Wizard C2 Pro. This is the one I have it set on the general mode. There is an advanced mode, but like I mentioned during the rest of the video, I'll probably keep it on the general mode. I find that there are enough levels and enough lumen settings here that uh, I don't know that why I'd want to switch over maybe to get access to the strobes, but at this point I don't feel it necessary. So uh, this is the one that has two fireflies, three main modes, and a turbo. So firefly one, firefly two, this is low, medium, high, and turbo. So this being a headlamp primarily, as well as an EDC light, it is primarily a floodlight. The distinction between the flood and the central hotspot is, well, almost not there. It's almost all flood. It doesn't have uh, a very distinct central hotspot, but the penetration is still pretty good for a headlamp. Not bad at all. Now I'm going to take it back down to low. Again, I just wanted you to see low, medium, high, and once again, turbo. All right, let's sum this video up, going through the pros and cons for the Army Tech Wizard C2 Pro flashlight. So what do I really like about it? Well, right off the top, of course, I like that it's a Canadian company. And I like the fact that they are not just contracting out the production of this light to a Chinese company, but that in fact, they built and run the factory in China and are keeping the quality control assurance controls uh, themselves. So I think that's important to know. There are a few other things, you know, physically looking, it was a little bit I don't know, different when I first saw it, but once I got used to it, I appreciated the slim profile. It doesn't have the same knurling. It has more of a, a rubberized finish on the outside. It's not the same anodizing you get on a lot of them. It's a very matte black finish on it. It's nice. It's just different, something you're not used to. I really like this heavy duty clip. Okay, there's two ways for looking at this thing. 
it is super heavy duty and you can see it's quite wide open right there so it will fit down over any belt just about any leather belt any nylon belt any web strapping on your backpack it'll fit over all of those uh, very well the downside of the clip it's super duty and super heavy duty it's really quite hard to get on and off now not the biggest deal in the world. Most people will either use it like this or take it off and mount it as a uh, headlight. So uh, it's not the end of the world. What's really cool about this is the 10 year no hassle warranty. I think that's gotta be an industry leading uh, thing. I don't think I've heard of anybody else with a warranty like that. 10 meter drop resistance, 10 meters underwater for two hours. Again, I don't think there's another flashlight on the market that will claim that for their life. So those are some pretty uh, good points for it. So what do I not like about this light? Well, I haven't talked about it, but uh, because it's just simply, it may not apply to everybody. And that's the head strap. Well constructed, nice looking, too small. I have it fully extended to its longest length and I can't wear it around my forehead without a hat on. I certainly could not wear it around my forehead with a hat on of any type, like a toque or beanie. So the, the, as a headlamp, this is out, at least with that strap. Now, if I mount it to something else, maybe, but I can't w use this as a headlamp with the existing strap. I'm not a big fan of magnetic tail caps for charging. I understand what they do for the integrity of the light and not having to worry about water penetrating through. That, that I'm sure it does very well. It's just that if I lose that, I have to take the battery out and find a charger for it in order to charge the battery after that. So I guess for that reason, I'm not a fan of the magnetic tail base. It's not a deal breaker. It's just not my favorite thing. <laughs> the thing that would make or break this for me though, are the modes of operation. I mean, it's amazing how many different luminosity settings they have built into this and how many turbos and how many strobes. Too many. That's just simply my, my take on it. It's just too many. I, as I mentioned, I think most people will choose either the general type or the advanced type. Not very often are they going to switch back and forth. I'm, I'm not sure why. That you the, the, the differences between the lumen settings aren't so great that it makes you know, sense having to switch back and forth, stick with one or the other, whichever one you like and leave it there. That would be what, that is what I'm going to do probably in the general setting. As you saw with the outdoor, uh, beam shoots or the outdoor, uh, testing, this is a great trail light. It's not a great searchlight. It works well in darkened area. It's nice EDC light, but it doesn't have a long throw on it, a long cast on it. And really for this type of light, that's not what it's, in it's intended for. I think this is actually a great trail light as a camp light, because I think flood is more important in, in those uses than is uh, throw. It's nice to have a good distance throw, but around the campsite and when I'm on the trail, I really want to know what's around me as opposed to what's out 300 meters. So this is just, uh, has the right uh, type of reflector, the right type of a setup to give you a very good, it still has a hot spot, but it has more flood, I think, than anything else, which is exactly what I appreciate from this light. All right, so those are my thoughts on the Wizard C2 Pro from Army Tech. They do have other offerings in their lineup as well. They have one like this with a 21700 battery. That must be a monster because, you know, that's heavy enough to be wearing on your head. I don't have it. I'm, I'm not sure that I'll ever have the opportunity to test it, but if you're interested, I will be putting all the information about this flashlight, including all the specifications, all the performance specification, the modes of operation, everything that I have, I'll put them in the video description below. I'll also put links to where this light can be purchased, but I would ask you if you have any comments or any questions to put them in the comments section below. Do you own one of these lights? Lights, and if so, what's your experience with it? That's what I'm really interested in knowing. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.